Howdy folks. So yesterday I did the HBA upgrade on uh, my file server and uh, I thought that would be that but uh, it did a, an automated scrub this morning and uh, I woke up to realize that it was running very very slow um, significantly slower than before and of course that shouldn't uh, that shouldn't happen so I got on my laptop and I went through and I looked at the, the IOSTAT output to see if there was just a disk that was dragging everything down. And no, everything was very even, in fact, more even than it had ever been before, as sort of expected, now that all the disks are on one controller. And I sort of immediately got that sinking feeling that I've got a PCI Express problem. And so I started up LSPCI and shoved in some uh, verbose flags, and we do indeed have a PCI Express problem. So this is... Um, this is the SAS controller here, and the card, of course, is a PCI Express Gen 2 X8 card. Um, as you can see here by the, capa uh, the capabilities of the link, it is a Gen 2, which is 5 gigatransfers per second at X8. Uh, nothing uh, strange there. However, it's operating at Gen 1, 2.5 gigatransfers per second, X4. So that's a quarter of its rated bandwidth, and of course, uh, that is going to create a massive bottleneck. Of course, uh, the card, given that it has eight ports at six gigabits per second each, uh, that's a total of 48 gigabits per second. So even at even if it was running at its full link width and uh, speed, it would only be 40 gigabits per second. But uh, I mean, that's just kind of what you have to deal with. But uh, uh, in this case, I'm only running at 10 gigabits per second. And uh, of course, that is significantly lower than even SATA 2 speeds. And of course, uh, that is most certainly the cause of the problem. And the other thing that's interesting is under here we say we see target link speed is five gigatransfers per second, and uh, this speed, of course, is does not match this, which is quite odd. And the first thing that I thought about was could it be um, power management, uh, link power management? And I have seen this. There are some graphics cards that do this, where when there's not much traffic over the link they will uh, revert to Gen 1 speeds and then they will jump back up to their target speed um, when there's more traffic. But I have loaded this down to 100% and this does not change. So I do not think uh, that's it. Also, I've just simply checked uh, and there is uh, it is all disabled. Uh, all the power management is disabled on PCI Express. So that can't be it. So, um, I, I mean, I looked into the motherboard and I looked into um, the chipset and this is fully capable uh, of doing this. Um, so this, this is correct. So the reason why the width is X4 um, is simply due to that's the way that's the, the motherboard is wired. Um, it's kind of confusing because it's an X16 slot which has X8 pins populated of which only X4 of those pins are actually connected to anything. So it's kind of, uh, when I first looked at it, I thought it was an X8 slot, but no, it actually is wired as X4. And uh, you have to, you actually have to read the manual to figure that out. Um, and I, I, I verified that with LS, LSPCI, that is indeed correct. So uh, the best we can get out of that is X4. And there really isn't much that I can do about that because this motherboard only has two slots. One of which, uh, the, the high speed slot, well, one that's directly wired to the CPU, that's Gen 2 X16 wired for Gen 2 X16, and I've got the InfiniBand card in there, which is Gen 1 X8, and there's nothing I can do about that, because if I take that card, because it's a Gen 1 card, if I were to move that down to the lower slot, which is only X4, uh, it would reduce the bandwidth, um, and that card would be pretty much useless, because that card, technically speaking, um, should be able to push 80 gigabits, um, which of course it can't, but... Um, I want to get it as, as, as much bandwidth as I can out of that card, and that's important to me. So I can't move that, and everything else is either PCI or PCI Express X1, which is all useless for this. So I can't move the card, and this 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 2.5 is very, very strange. And the first, the, the thing that came to mind, and it's currently my leading hunch, because I really don't have any, con, uh, any definitive evidence as to what this is, my hunch is that this is being caused by signal integrity issues on the motherboard. Um, some drivers will, if they run the card at its proper speed and they encounter errors, they will, uh, just as sort of a preventative measure, they drop the speed down. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, basically take the server down. I'm going to get out a flash drive with a live CD on it. I'm going to boot that up and with a new kernel and everything and just ensure that everything is the same. And then I'm going to pull out the InfiniMan card and I'm going to boot it back up and see if this jumps up to 5. And if it does, then that would indicate that uh, the InfiniBand card may be causing in signal integrity issues, in which case there's really not much I can do. Um, I'm also going to try disabling the onboard real technic because I'm not using it, and that's technically using up an X1 lane. Uh, and I may move my gigabit, uh, my dual gigabit card from one of the X1 slots to another one just to get it further away from the other cards in case that's uh, causing issues as well. Um, there's a few things I can try, but none of them are guaranteed to work. Now, worst comes to worst, I can't actually resolve this. Uh, I'm not entirely screwed because, of course, I got away with this before. Um, basically, I would simply just have to drop the number of drives that's connected to this card. Uh, currently, I've got all of them connected to it. So what, I, what I'm planning on doing, if, if I can't resolve this, is I'm going to just take four of the disks, plug them into the motherboard directly, leave four of them on this, and in that case, I'm running 12 gigabits per second of SATA 2 on uh, 10 gigabits, which is pretty much what I was doing before. Remember, I had two SATA 2 X1 cards, that's 10 gigabits, with four drives, and I'm now doing the same thing. Um, so it's exactly the same performance. I should get exactly the same performance as I did before with the, the two smaller cards. Um, and it's just, I think that's just kind of the way that this is going to turn out. But... I'm hopeful that maybe I can figure out what's going on, but anyway, I've got to uh, prepare to take the server offline again, so uh, let me get started with that. So I've removed all the cards and um, just basically just leaving the HBA in, that made no difference. So I moved the HBA to the top slot, the one that's directly connected to the CPU, and uh, in that situation it works at the correct speed. Um, and I've reinserted the uh, InfiniBand HBA in the uh, the old slot, um, and it's getting the same thing, uh, but that's expected though because of course the capabilities of that card is only uh, Gen 1. So uh, it, at the moment it appears to be the slot, uh, although I have no reason as to I have no reasonable explanation as to why it's not running at the correct speed. And to be honest, this is probably just going to be one of those situations where. Um, I'll never know why it's not working correctly. Um, but anyway, I don't have much time, so I'm just going to go grab all of the SATA cables that I pulled out of this thing and stick four of them back in, um, move the cards back around, and just kind of live with that, I guess. So, I mean, it works, so I guess that's that's what's uh, important. The other thing I've noticed after shutting this thing uh, down and you know moving the cards around, booting it up and all that stuff, is uh, this card, just like the last SAS controller I've had, doesn't spin down the fucking discs. I mean, I, I don't understand this. What is with Enterprise SAS controllers and their complete lack of regard for the health of the discs? I mean, it, it literally, it just, it just cuts the power. It doesn't even make an attempt to tell the disc that, you know, uh, the power is going to be cut. Um, I mean... I mean, you'd think these super high-quality parts that cost a fortune and are connected to drives which cost a fortune would, you know, they'd at least put in that functionality. I mean, the cheap $6 chips have that, so I'm just, I'm kind of appalled by that, but anyway. So yeah, I'm going to move things around, probably put the old stuff back, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like uh, when it's done. So here it is, all back together again. As you can see, I've only got four disks on that HBA, and the rest are all on SATA 2 directly on the motherboard, connected uh, directly to the uh, the PCH. And uh, it doesn't really matter that much. I mean, all the drives, they all share the 4 gigabyte per second DMI bus anyway, because that, that slot that the HBA is on also goes through the bus because it's connected uh, to a lane on the uh, on the PCH. So it's it's fine. Um, it's I mean, it'll basically be the same performance as before, just more reliable. And uh, I'm still totally okay with that. So let me fire it up and uh, we should be good to go. So everything's booted up and working normally. Um, as you can see, uh, it all looks good. In fact, I've gotten all my serial numbers back in the, uh, the ZFS status output. So obviously by moving those disks around, I managed to get them in the exact same order they were before. 
Um, so that's kind of that's kind of neat. But uh, yeah, everything looks good. Uh, kernel log looks good, and uh, I've just set up a scrub actually. So uh, I just started that because I, I had to cancel the previous one because it was just it was so slow. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. I don't expect there to be uh, any problems with this. Um, it's exactly the same as it was before, pretty much. Let's see if IOStat shows anything. Not really. Yeah, they're all they're all very equal. So, as I expect them to be. So, anyway, I guess uh, one nice thing about doing this is I get back the uh, the status hard disk status LED because when all the disks were on that controller, uh, this LED of course is only controlled by the uh, the SATA ports on the motherboard and anything. Um, yeah, it's actually just just the motherboard. So in that case, um, you won't get any disk activity, you'll only get the SSD activity, which usually only shows up during a write. Whereas in this case, because half the disks are on the motherboard controller, if there's any array activity that's you know substantial um, or significant, um, this, uh, this LED will come on. So I, I guess I've kind of regained that functionality, which is nice. But yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. So if anyone has any real idea as to why that lane will not go to Gen 2 speeds regardless of whether it should or not, uh, please let me know uh, because not not necessarily I'm going to do anything about it, but just for my own curiosity, I'd really like to know because uh, I thought I understood PCI, but apparently not because I don't know what's going on. So anyway, hopefully that was uh, interesting. Thanks for watching.